Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another segment of ASAF Cafe. I am your host, ASAF Adonai, and it's 12.32, 33. <laughs> yep. That'd be a guide right there. Mm -hmm. And we're on our Honolulu set, Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And this is the second episode of season 11. Mm -hmm. Luis Bundy was with me last week. Yep. And we talked about... And we talked about the stars that mm. we lost. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like Harry Fisher. ABC said, yeah, there were like all, almost Whoa. 100 people we lost in 2016. Amazing. Yeah. Like authors, musicians, mm -hmm. and so on. So on my immediate left, we have affectionately our aging rocker, Emmett, who's yep. returned. And, uh, yeah. Teresa Tuigo's not here. I saw her last week, but mm -hmm. I guess she's a little tied up right now. So mm -hmm. she'll show up when she's ready. And Linda Brooks-Curtis has been tied up lately. Mm -hmm. So you and I are going to do a one-on-one -on, -one oh, on our new Hawaii set, and I think it'll be a blast. Yep. <laughs> Let's quickly part. Yes, Heavenly, I was going to say start us off. Heavenly Father, bless our food and our time together in the show in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's been a while since I've seen you here. Let me uh, start yeah. playing here. Yeah, I saw relatives in Oregon for Christmas. I flew over. That was really nice. You know, really good time to get together. Very good. What did you do for New Year? Um... What did I do? I went to Mass, I went to church, uh -huh. but I just rested. I, I think I watched like a, the Twilight Zone, a marathon that they had on sci-fi, and I had some champagne. Oh, good. Yeah, some champagne to the New Year, and a twi the Twilight Zone episodes marathon, and I saw some ones I even hadn't seen before. I can't remember what they even really were about. Uh -huh. so what were they about? One was interesting, I forgot <coughs> what it was. It was a very good one. I thought it was fascinating. But I don't even remember what it was about, though. Oh, yeah, it wasn't one of their best, but there was this guy who hated people. He worked in an office all the time, he was loud, and he hated people. People is the problem. Okay. Well, someone gave him this book about how your will can influence things. Okay. You can will some. Well, he willed that the, the whole world wouldn't have any people. He'd be alone. Okay. And it came true. There was no people in the office, nobody. That This is correct. Good. But I mean, he was talking to himself, but he was getting getting bored. So he uh -huh. wanted a thunderstorm, and he made a thunderstorm, but they thought, Wait, wait, I am getting lonely. I want uh -huh. people, but not... What if they were all like me? Whole bunch of world of people just like me. Well, they all looked at him, and they were always very grumpy and angry uh -huh. people. And I said, oh, this isn't working. He said, this isn't working. He just decided, let's just have people back. I'll just have to suffer with people back. It was interesting, you know. And that was the Twilight Zone? Yeah. It was one of the old ones from the 60s. That was pretty good. <laughs> So that's what I did for New Year's. What did you do? Well, I spent Christmas with Louise, and yes. uh, I told you we had that game pin. Yes. It was very good. Mm -hmm. So she picked me up about Christmas Eve. Wonderful. And, uh, something like that, and we just shared it. And then for New Year's Eve, she invited me over, and we just had light hors d'oeuvres, like caviar and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, uh, it was just a wonderful way to start the year. Mm -hmm. I told her. I couldn't have thought of a better person to start the New Year's 2017 than with Louise. I Absolutely. Mean, she's just such a sweetheart. Yep. <laughs> so, you know, we we just had fun. Otherwise, I would have been alone just probably watching yeah. The Grinch at home or yeah. <laughs> something like yeah. that. So, But um, it was I had a wonderful start for 2017. Wonderful, yeah. And then, as I mentioned, I won't get into it now, but there were so many so-called notable people yeah. that we lost in 2016. Yeah, there were. Yeah. So I just picked a handful yeah. Like, you know, Carrie Fisher mm -hmm. and Debbie Reynolds and mm -hmm. um, David Bowie and just... I know. Because it, it, we didn't even get to talk about them because there was just too many that we mm -hmm. lost. Mm -hmm. So I just picked a handful and that's what Luis and I talked about last week. Mm -hmm. But you're here now, so some of the things I want to talk to you about, like, uh, you know, the Martin Luther King holidays coming oh, up yeah. here mm -hmm. a little bit. And uh, talk about the new Star Wars movie. I've yep. not seen it yet, so you won't have to give it away. But <laughs> I'm not going to give it away. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> let's see. See if you know this. Uh, um, um, Darth Vader's theme song, The Imperial Death March. Yep, I loved yeah. it. The only thing that was disappointing about the new Star Wars movie, they didn't, you know, have, have the, you know, pr prologue about what the movie was about, you know, Star Wars, it could have been Star Wars three and a half, Rogue One, about the beginning of the Rebellion, which was basically what it was, it was about the Rebellion versus the Empire, but you know something, it was a fascinating movie, 
It fit so well with number three and was the perfect prequel to number four. Uh huh. What's and the name of worked? the Star Wars film? Did you, did you um, Rogue it? One. Now, is that the latest in the Star Wars? Mm -hmm. That was the Darth Vader march, in case people on TV. Yeah, were. exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know. But it was called Rogue One. Uh -huh. I don't know what I wanted to talk to you about. You know, we were talking about the, the Twilight Zone. Yeah. I was listening to Dr. David Jeremiah the other day, and he was talking about Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, cool. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said he, 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 was, he, he like watched that show because of the suspense. Mm -hmm. And the topic of the sermon was to have hope. Mm -hmm. So he used the analogy of this Alfred Hitchcock episode that he'd mm -hmm. seen on television, and it was about this lady who was really cranky and mean. Yeah. And so she was in prison, right? <laughs> and there was this uh, guard that had cataract problems so the cranky lady says if you let me out of this prison i've got the money to get your eyes fixed and the guy says i can't do that so the the cranky old lady in prison kept insisting and yeah. trying to persuade him so finally <laughs> the guard gives in and says okay here's what you do um when you hear the bell ring that means we're taking a dead body out outside for yeah. burial and uh that'll be your cue to escape mm -hmm. so the lady says okay that's fine so all she had to do was put herself in a coffin uh -huh. with a corpse they roll the coffin out and she could escape mm -hmm. so when the time came the cranky old lady in prison heard the bell and she gets into the coffin uh with this corpse but she didn't know who the corpse was because yeah. it was dark and everything and see when they were at as soon at, for, for her to get out of the coffin, as soon as they take it outside, when she hears the dirt hitting the coffin, yeah. that's a sign for her to get out because it's just yeah. barely any dirt. So anyway, the lady hears the bell. She gets in the coffin, right? They roll the coffin out, and she hears the dirt being poured. Yeah. <clears throat> so she stays in the coffin, and then she wonders why the door hasn't opened for the coffin, for her to escape, yeah. to go help the guard with the cataracts. And so then she gets really freaky and starts to freak out in this coffin. So she takes a lighter, she lights it from inside the coffin, and she sees the, the guard that she was going to help. Mm -hmm. And so she was trapped in the coffin with the guard who had passed. Amazing. And that, that's classic. Power that is, that is fantastic. fantastic. And so <laughs> that analogy was this lady now had no hope. Yeah. So Dr. Jeremiah was using that analogy of that show to talk about what it's like when you don't have hope. Exactly. Compared to those who have hope. And it, that's just kind of eerie, you know? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, Alfred Hitchcock was known for um, just those mystery kind of <laughs> shows. I don't... And, I, you know, I think that a good mystery is... Yeah. Just, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that mm -mm. at all. Mm -mm. It's like your little Twilight Zone. I, I didn't care for every episode of the Twilight Zone, but... Uh, Nor did I. But that, you just made me think of that, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, I'm going to play Santa Lucia while we're talking. But, yeah, that, 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 would, that would be pretty creepy, you know. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> yeah, I love this new Star Wars because I'm not going give, to give the ending away one of the plots, but it's beautifully done. When did you see it? Um, I saw it in Oregon uh, when I was visiting my relatives. Yeah, I saw it um, after Christmas. Good for you. Mm -hmm. And the laser battles of Space Wars were spectacular, and it really fit in and tied in with Star Wars, you know, and the, uh, the fourth one, The New Hope. So, so they had the Vader characters and all that, too? They did. And, you know, remember, do you guys remember, do, do we talk about Dark Force Rising, whatever, The Force Awakens, or whatever that was called? I don't think so. Was Carrie Fisher in this latest one? Before yes, he was. Yes. Okay. I'm not gonna, well, actually, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 I can't give that away. Sorry, I don't want to give anything okay. away. You didn't hear anything. There was kind of a, I don't want to, oh, that was a bad idea, but anyway... It was just a great film. Yeah, of The Force Awakens or something, what it was called, I think that was last, that was the year before, 2015. Uh -huh. That was just a remake of the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope, with different things. It was after, uh -huh. you know, the, the Empire had been defeated and they wanted to make something else, but 
I, they had another type of empire, another resistance, another Death Star. Uh -huh. And when they were attacking the Death Star in that one of the Force Awakens, I was just praying, Oh Lord, please don't have them attack the Death Star like like they did in the, uh, like a remake of the first of the first movie. New Hope. Oh no, Lord, they're attacking the Death Star with the next one again. Lord, can't we have something new? I wasn't doing this. What I was praying silently was God was going. <coughs> look, Lord, look, lasers, space wars, fascinating. Look at the lasers, Lord. I was silently praying. Look, do you see them? It makes me want to spin in a dryer. Oh, that's what I so, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate this an 8 or a 9. The new one. I've got to get that on DVD. It was fascinating. Yeah, The Force Awakens was a bad one, but I loved this one. Good. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Now, is that like the fifth or sixth Star Wars movie? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the eighth one. Okay, yeah. See, I haven't been... After The Return of the Jedi, yeah. I just lost track, but... Yeah. Um, it's good to know that Carrie Fisher was at least well, in it. Well, I, I really... She passed. Yeah. Just... No, well, I haven't seen it, so I, I don't think I'm giving anything away. I, I just know that she had... We recently lost her, so... Yeah, that yeah. That was good that she got to do one last, at least, final film. I yeah. Think. I'm not going to reveal anything about it. I shouldn't have even you've done that for oh, people no, no, who no, haven't no. seen I, it. I, I wouldn't worry about that, but I was just curious if, if this was her final film. That's yeah. Right. But, um... <clears throat> anyway, uh... Yeah, the TV audience can watch it, so let's not worry. We, we, we won't give any plots away. Yeah. Well, she wasn't. She was in the, the number seven, and right. I don't think she was in this particular one. I think they had a com com computer generated one because she was so much younger. But it was just. Oh, I, they I might have taken cl clips from the past. Yeah, know, who knows? Past, yeah. Uh, performances. I'm not sure what it was, but it was very well, well you done. Know, we have technology in this <clears> country, yeah. so they can they can do things like that. Yeah. You know, take mm. images like Star Trek. Um, yes. You remember the uh, the cage episode? Yes. Remember they were showing those yes. scenes when mm -hmm. Spock was younger? Mm -hmm. They just took film footage when we actually shot mm -hmm. that. That's mm -hmm. how they did that. And attached it on to mm -hmm. when we were a, little, a few years older. Mm -hmm. But anyway, oh, by the way, thanks for coming to see me play at the mall. Uh, I loved it. This is my, that was my seventh year. Wow. Playing at that mall. Can you believe it? Wow. Seven years. And also the Patty Creek Market. Seven years playing. Wonderful. <laughs> And uh, time just flies. I know it does. So I hope I haven't aged that much in seven years. But <laughs> yeah, that, that, it, it, it's always a fun to play at that mall, you know. Mm. And they had a brand new piano this mm -hmm. year. Yep. So I have to thank, thank Steve Yearwood and Lauren and the staff at the uh, mall for giving me permission to go there this year and play. And it was a lot of fun this year. Yeah, it was, yeah. Especially for the seventh year. <laughs> mm-hmm. So... I'll just, I told them that I'll keep on playing there as long as the Lord keeps blessing me with my health. Mm -hmm. I said the same thing to um, Professor Green, too, that I'll keep on playing as long as my health holds up. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's amazing. Guess what? I'm now 49. I turned 49 December. This will be my last year that I'll be in my 40s. Next, I mean, this year. When is your 20, birthday? It's December the 11th. Oh, okay. So th you're December. 49 now. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so th this year, this year, you'll turn fifty. I will turn fifty. Well, you certainly don't look it. Oh, thanks. You really don't. And uh, if the Lord bless me and we get that Lawrence Smoke show going, I want to use you while you're. Oh, definitely. <laughs> this is the perfect time. It you is. You got the right age for if you do those Bible stories with the children. And yeah, stuff. exactly. So I'm working on that still. Great. I don't have any news to report yet, but uh, yeah, I'm still sending out proposals. Mm -hmm. It's going to take probably a few years or something mm -hmm. to launch it. You know, mm -hmm. like that Superman um, television show with oh uh, Christopher Reeve, not Christopher Reeve, George Reeve, George Reeve, yeah, White. yeah. Uh, they had filmed that and just went on with their lives, and two years later they finally started yeah. showing the series. And the actors had sort of forgotten about it because they were doing other things and they yeah. saw themselves on TV. Mm -hmm. And of course, Superman was a hit. Six yeah. seasons, six seasons of that. You know, yeah, that was a good show. I really liked that Superman. You know, yeah, I, that. That's my that was really favorite. good, yeah. That old. You know what I liked about it? The black and white series. Yeah. It was in true form to Superman. You know, with yeah. the gangsters mm -hmm. and, and you know stopping crime and stuff. Yeah, that was wonderful. But as the series went on, they changed their writing. Yeah. To fit children. Mm -hmm. And I think that was 
bad right Yeah, now. it was. I think it very much because so. Because yeah. children are going to get older and they're going to lose interest in, in that sort of thing. Exactly. And I love children, but mm -hmm. I think they should just keep it serious when they I agree. have a series like that. I agree. But that was then. But yeah. at least it lasted six years. Yeah. Ago. There was one funny episode about a gangster that just got out of prison. Mm -hmm. And it was some ridiculous thing. I'm not sure how it happened or what it happened. But um, one, he wanted to make a bet with another gangster about, well, my wife or my girlfriend cooks excellent pies. No, mine is no. And basically, they wanted some sort of ridiculous contest and Superman or something had to deliver some pies or they had to deliver some pies and one of these gangsters came in from the freezing cold. They'd walked from um, um, the Arctic or some ridiculous thing, which is impossible, to get this pie. And finally he said, you know, he was freezing and he said to this, to um, Clark Kent, you know what? M me and such and such, you know, we're going to get legitimate this uh -huh. time. No more crime, I'm going to have the straight life I cross my heart. We're going legitimate. He said, I really believe you this time because he had learned his lesson from being in the cold so much in some sort of cave. It was kind of stupid, but kind of funny. I can't remember the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Oh, boy. But yeah, uh -huh. should have, they should have kept it more serious. And I think maybe more of a science fiction element, maybe aliens or robots or... So well, you know, when good. Superman first came out, like, in 1939 or whatever year, yeah, that's kind of what it was like. It wasn't, mm. like, necessarily geared toward children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, children read the comic books, but uh -huh. the, the plot lines. So when mm. they made the movies, they it was in true form, at least to me, until they changed yeah. the writing. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Lost in Space. You yeah, know, you definitely. You watch Billy Moomy in the interviews, and, I, and you know, they all talk about that, that uh, it was more serious at yeah. first. <laughs> like that scene when they first took off into space, and Professor Robinson went outside the spaceship yep. to fix, do some adjustments, mm -hmm. and his, his line broke, so he started floating out in space, and his wife Maureen goes out there with his little gun with his rope, and shoots mm -hmm. it out. And, you know, that, that that's what they should have kept that kind of yeah, serious, definitely. instead of those goofy monsters I that know. they started having. Yeah. And stuff. But, you know, they were thinking of children, and I guess. Yeah. And, and uh... Because if I were Irwin Allen, I would have kept that show. Oh, absolutely, like, absolutely. Uh, <coughs> they did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it was always fun watching Lost in Space in the beginning with those black and white episodes. Yeah, and yeah. And you know how serious they were and stuff like that. Yeah. And Dr. Smith's character, yeah. they should have um, made him more tough. They should have, yeah, yeah. At first he was the bad guy. Yeah, Russian menacing. Villain. Like, yeah, nah, they really should have, yeah. <coughs> and sometimes it's hard for me to watch Lost in Space because... The character of Dr. Smith is yeah. just so like, yikes. I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to pick on the actor that played him because he yeah. was a fine actor. Yeah. Because I read his, I saw his bio on the mm -hmm. computer. He mm -hmm. did a lot of stuff. Yep. But he'll always be remembered for playing Dr. Smith. So. Definitely, oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. This little cowardly. I know, so Woo! irritating. Yeah, so Hiding good. behind the kids and yeah. stuff. And that is just tough to watch. It is, is, yeah. Grow a man so scared that he hides behind children. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Or passes out and faints. And yeah. The names he calls a robot. You know, yeah. but hey, that's television back yeah. then. Stuff like that. I was watching an episode of Gilligan's Island um, on Me TV, and it was just fun yeah. looking back at. Definitely. The type of humor they have, which is probably corny by today's I know, standards. I still love it. Yeah, definitely. But Gilligan's Island was a fun show. Oh, it was yeah. wonderful. I have all three seasons on DVD. Where did you get that at? Oh, I got that at Hastings. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, Hastings is closed now, but I got it a few years ago, all the episodes on DVD, so. Well, good for you. Well, that's just like so many episodes I have. Um, I have I Spy mm. that I got last year for Christmas. Season two, mm -hmm. Bill Cosby and Robert Culp. You mm -hmm. ever watched that? Never heard of it. It had a it had a theme that went something like this. Then a spy. Mm hmm You recognize? Nope, never watched it. Hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Here's the conclusion. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it just had that kind of 
mystery sound yeah. to it. You know, I wished they would have all the gong shows on DVD. I called Hastings when they were there, when they were still around and asked, but they didn't have any DVDs of the gong show. That would have been perfect. Wouldn't that have been hilarious? Uh, yeah. I wish Hastings hadn't closed. I'm broken hearted. They closed. I loved Hastings. Did you ever like Hastings or not? I yeah, love Hastings. Yeah, they had my autobiography there on sale, so when yeah. they closed it down, I had to go in. Oh, yeah, wait, I, I was I at your autobiography yeah, thing with you at right Hastings, yeah. So I had to go in there and get all the books that were left. I gave yeah. them Happy Homes, but I had to take them yeah. out of Hastings before they just got rid of them or whatever they were. Yeah, really I doing. got some easy listening records. Remember, we were at your book signing. Yeah, I yeah. remember that. I'm I miss Hastings. Your, tell me if you know this song. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I know. We were talking about Winnie the Pooh earlier. I know. And, you know, that. The, I know you're maybe not necessarily a fan of Winnie the Pooh, but uh, they had some interesting characters on mm -hmm. there. Oh, yeah. Like uh, Piglet. Yeah. And uh, Piglet was just such a mm -hmm. character. He had, his heart was always in the right place, even if he was dead wrong. I yeah, think. yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Uh, what was that, uh, Tigger? Yeah. The, the Tiger? Yeah, the only thing from uh, Winnie the Pooh I really like, I don't, I don't hate Winnie the Pooh, it's just kind of boring, but you you know I love Toddler Tunes, Channel yeah. 926. They had uh -huh. an excellent song from Winnie the Pooh. Oh, nothing can move like a Tigger, except from a shadow we go, because it pulses and tells us wherever I go. Well, you know, and there are That's tiggers, a sweet song. That's yeah, it, I love it. Tiggers, they, they bounce, you know. Mm -hmm. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. Mm -hmm. tiggity, 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 yep, that like is adorable, that, you know? yeah. Cute. Mm. And uh, it's just such a cute. Uh, I think I told you the story. Um, I have like Winnie the Pooh in my collection at home. Oh, wonderful! And they had this uh, episode where, you know, Rabbit likes to keep his home yes. immaculate. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he gets everything clean, the floors all mopped and everything. Mm -hmm. Tigger comes bouncing into his house, and the wind goes and blows everything out, and he just has dirt and stuff all on the floor again after. Poor rabbit had cleaned out his place, right? Mm -hmm. And Tigger wanted to know when winter was going to start because they had the calendar mm -hmm. in Rabbit's house. But when the door was open, it blew some of the pages off the calendar. Uh, <laughs> <yep>. <laughs> so when Rabbit looks at the calendar and says, hey, winter's already passed, mm -hmm. which it hadn't. So they wanted to make sure, so they take little piglet, right? Mm -hmm. And they couldn't find a groundhog. Mm -hmm. So they, they see this beaver. And they wanted to take this beaver and turn him into a groundhog, and the beaver gets ticked off. I am not a groundhog. Uh, I'm a beaver. How dare yeah. you say that to me so the beaver wouldn't cooperate, right? So yeah. they took Tigger, and they put these teeth on him. And so when they put Tigger in the ground, if if the legend says that if you can't yeah. see, you got so many more weeks left. And so the teeth and the costume that they had on Piglet fell while he was in the ground, so he couldn't see what he was doing. So when they pull him up, he's like, I can't see. So they thought the uh, winter had passed, right? And then the next day, the snow yeah, came and a yeah. whiz came after Pigman said that uh, yeah. winter had passed and it had passed because of um, mm. Tigger opening the door and blowing the pages of the calendar off and it just offset everything. A yeah. cute little episode. Oh, wonderful. And I feel sorry for little Piglet because he yeah. was all happy and everything. Yeah. He did a wonderful thing and, yeah. and uh, it just wreaked havoc. Wonderful. Have you ever heard of a children's storybook series called Corduroy? No, I haven't. I love Corduroy. Oh, you're in for a treat. It was years ago. It was in the first in the 60s. It was a boy. It was about this adorable stuffed teddy bear named Corduroy. He was in a department store, and basically he didn't want to be alone. He just... He was... Uh, finally, he had closed or something had closed, and the department store had closed or something. He started exploring, you know, the department store. This is very interesting. But boy, I wish I had a home to go to. And uh, finally, the, the night watchman um, found him and put him back on the shelf. And then there's a little um, girl found Corduroy and just loved Corduroy and took Corduroy into her home, you know, as a teddy bear. Uh -huh. It was an adorable one. It's hard to describe Corduroy. It's just an adorable little bear with a teddy bear with overalls. He had missed a button and something. Oh, and he had tried. He was trying to find his lost button that he had missed, and this little girl sewed a button on. But then they have done some later. Uh huh. 
I don't know if this cartoon is a cartoon. Uh, no, it's, um, I, it might have been. I think there might have been something on PBS, but it was mostly children's books, illustrated books, uh -huh. or little illustrated books, you know? Well, it's amazing how time flies. Um, it's been almost 30 minutes. Amazing, yeah. Talking. They've made um, an updated Cordery, which I really love, where Cordery somehow moved on to his own beautiful cabin in the wilderness or someplace, where basically he has some other friends like Mouse. Let's see, Rabbit, or is it Bunny, or is it, you know? Mouse, Rabbit, or something, or let's see, then Dolly. Dolly is a, a stuffed toy, you know, doll. You know, Dolly, of a, a sweet, you know, Dolly. And then let's see, was it Rabbit, Dolly, um, Mouse? Yeah, I can't even remember them. Oh, just a toy stuffed mouse, just adorable. Just, you know, the, the sweeter, sweetest thing where they have like Corduroy's Christmas uh -huh. or Corduroy's Easter. I see. And they're beautifully illustrated by Lisa McHugh, and they're so well detailed. Uh -huh. Like, um, I don't think I'm giving anything away, so... Um, I got these at Hastings, you know, but I just love them. Corduroy's Easter was about... Corduroy was inviting his friends over. Uh -huh. They were going to have an Easter party. But, and they were waiting for the Easter bunny and preparing for the Easter party, and it was beautiful daffodils and flowers everywhere, and... Um, um, let's see, Mouse could hardly get his kite to get uh -huh. into the air. Was it someone else? No! I don't know what. Doggy. Was it? No, Puppy. That was one of the other stuffed characters, Puppy. I see. Maybe I should bring some corduroy books in, you know, the next time we do a cafe. Yeah, so we can show. talk about that. And, you know, um, uh, uh, let's see, Puppy could barely get his kite into the air, <laughs> but they were going to have an Easter party. And, but... A, cor a corduroy really um, didn't know if the Easter Bunny it did exist because no one had ever seen the Easter Bunny, but he didn't want to uh, spoil the fun, so he kept his doubts to himself. And then they prepared for the Easter party and the uh -huh. lilies, and they showed the Easter Bunny uh, in little parts. <laughs> if you could see him in the you know bottom, but he looked like a wild rabbit. Oh, okay. Beautifully done. I can't wait to show these books next week. Please well, let's remind. talk about this sometime because I'm not familiar with these characters here. Well, so. anyway, they had their um, Easter um, party, mm -hmm. and, all, and it was a lot of fun, but and they hid Easter eggs. But then they came back, and guess what? There's a whole basket of candy and everything, and said a note saying, From your friend, dear Corduroy, happy um, Easter from your friend, the Easter Bunny. And he realized the Easter, the bunny was real. It was beautiful. And Corduroy's Christmas was really nice, where um, uh, uh, Corduroy was going to have his friends over for Christmas. But they were talking about, I want this, I want that. And, uh, that. But Corduroy had asked Santa for all of those. And he was writing a Santa for there. But what if there weren't enough presents? And he got what he wanted, but his friends didn't. So he wrote, on a, you know, please give ice skates for Mouse, something for Puppy, and something. I don't need anything this year. Uh, uh, thank you, Santa. And then he, you know, got some tea and made some cookies and was so comforting. And uh -huh. then he fell asleep. But when he, um, it was snowing outside. And when he came to the living room, guess what? There was a whole bunch of presents, extra presents, because Santa had come, and extra ones from each of them, and even... Corduroy got uh -huh. some presents. Wow! And it was, and he was very happy that his friends were there on, you know, Christmas Day, and they had gotten their presents too, and some extra presents, and just, and Corduroy got ice skates and a sweater. And he didn't. How did Santa know he wanted those? Because uh -huh. he hadn't answered. Oh, just great! It was just a sweet. I can't wait to bring them in. You know. Yeah, just, we're talking about that. Yeah. Do you recognize this? What I'm playing? No. Nope. It's leading up to what I'm gonna bring up in a moment. Here's a melody. Mm hmm. <laughs> you don't recognize him? No. Oh, it's by the way, him. it's an old hymn. Cool. It's called a bomb in Gilead. Uh huh. <laughs> The reason I decided to play that is because, you know, the Martin Luther King yes. holiday is coming up. Yes, it is. And there was this choir, I don't remember what state they were from, like mm -hmm. a collegiate choir or mm -hmm. something like that, and they were singing that song. Oh, wonderful. The choir form was mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Balm and Gilead is the name of the song. It's beautiful. Wonderful, they, yeah. They did it for the Martin Luther King wonderful. holiday. And uh, can you believe that? Yeah. That it's coming up, <coughs> what, uh, next week, I think? Yeah, the next Monday, yep. Yeah, and... Actually, his birthday is actually coming up this Sunday, but they're going to celebrate the yeah. national holiday on Monday. Yep. Monday. And I used to play for a lot of those mm -hmm. Martin Luther King 
events. Wonderful. Yeah. What a what a legacy. Oh, he was, was incredible. You know? Yeah. Just, this is a man. Well, not just him. I know there are others, <coughs> but he was like the prominent. He was. Yeah. Person. <coughs> that this man spent his life trying to fight for peace mm -hmm. and freedom mm -hmm. and unity as far as racism and things mm -hmm. like that. And mm -hmm. that's just such a mm -hmm. beautiful legacy, I think. It was. So I'm, I'm sorry that he had to lose his life over it, but yeah, yeah. sometimes things like that happen. Yeah, they do. And all that does was thrust him and the cause yeah, it, uh, yeah. more. But uh, yeah, um, just what a legacy coming up. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I just wanted to kind of mention that. Wonderful. Uh, you got anything planned you're going to do for that day? Not really, no. Yeah, they'll probably have a bunch of stuff on television. Oh, yeah, yeah. The dream speech and all mm -hmm. the rest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done a lot of performances. I don't do them now as much as I did during those Martin Luther King holidays, but uh, interesting experience. Yep. And, you know, I look at it like this. You know, in the New Testament, mm -hmm. It says, how can you say you love God who you have not seen mm -hmm. and hate your brother mm -hmm. who you have exactly. seen? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's, I guess that would tie in to it, the, it would, yeah. Martin Luther King. Just, just food for thought. I mean, I'm not here to try to get exactly. rid of just, just food for thought. Mm -hmm. That racism and uh, hating somebody because exactly. they're different from you yeah. is just <clears> not <throat> good. Mm -hmm. So... Hopefully that legacy will mm -hmm. continue as far as people remembering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, so much for my little sermonette here, uh -huh. you know. Wow, time is breezing by here. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, you, you, you we're talking about your allergies. You, you sound well. Yeah, I sound, I'm feeling a bit better. Good. But I'm, I'm being referred to a specialist, so I'm going to uh -huh. have to see. So for, for a week before that, I won't be able to take any allergy pills. I'm going to be miserable, but I still have them, so... I'll mm -hmm. be seeing a specialist, you know. Cool. <clears throat> well, I hope it's not a food allergy or something, you know, a favorite food or something that would depress me. I don't know. As I just have, I've had them all last year, and I, it's time to see a specialist, so that's what I'm going to do. do. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Back to even the corduroy, the new corduroy books that they have the little stories. They're so detailed that when Corduroy and his friends were make, dying Easter eggs for the Easter egg party, the party, he had some old newspapers. You could even read some of the headlines on the paper. Illustrated by, or written by Lisa McCoy or whatever it was. They even had, because there were all newspapers all over the table when they were doing the Easter eggs. They were called the McHughie Times, and I always tried to read them, and you could. Just little headlines, like Karsten, Penny uh -huh. Karsten, Amy Rand, and it have little, um, uh, uh, little drawings on it. That much detail in, you know, in the corduroy books. I was thrilled. Just, you know, beautiful, you know? Uh-huh, cool. You recognize this song? MASH. There's a reason why I'm playing it. Mm-hmm. And you might be able, uh, you might appreciate it, or yeah. appreciate, appreciate it being Catholic. Yes. The actor that played Father McKay. Yes. We lost him too. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I never laughed at MASH. It kind of bored me. I didn't hate MASH, but I found it kind of dull. I just never laughed at their dry humor, you know. Well, it was a different kind of a humor too. But, yeah, it was uh, very dry. It was very dry, you know. Yeah, Christopher, what's his name? Uh... Mm -hmm. I can't think of his last name, uh, but we just lost him. Mm -hmm. We lost him on the last day of 2016, mm -hmm. the actor that played Father McKay. Mm -hmm. I think it was Catholic, his character. Mm -hmm. Since you're mm -hmm. Catholic, I just thought, mm -hmm. you know, I can kind of slightly yep. relate to that. William Christopher, I think was his name, mm -hmm. the actor. Advocate for, um, what was that, um... People with the autism issues. Oh, because good, good. He had a son in real mm -hmm. life that was autistic, mm -hmm. so he spent his life and used his fame and notoriety to help that cause people who families who struggle with autism. Oh, issues wonderful and stuff. And yeah, that's, that's a wonderful thing to do for somebody. You know? Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, we just lost him. I think he was like eighty something, <laughs> so he lived a pretty full yeah. life. But yeah. it's still sad when you lose someone, yeah. you know. 
Yeah, I never laughed at MASH. I never laughed at their jokes. I got their jokes, but I didn't think they were funny. It's dry humor. I need silly, off-the-wall, weird humor. Yeah, you, you talk about like the Patty Duke show or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something really bizarre like Alf. I loved Alf, but I just didn't like MASH, you know. I got the jokes, but weren't they so dry? <laughs> like, this doctor is very careful. He finally just gave the, go, gave the okay for, to use penicillin. Of course, we had been using penicillin for years, but I just, I felt, I think they went over for me like a lead balloon. I know a lot of people uh -huh. love MASH, but I found it just dull, I guess. I never laughed once, not once. And with comedy, if you don't laugh, it's a total failure, you know? Well, you know, my birth mom couldn't get into MASH either, so yeah. <laughs> you're in pretty good company. Yeah. She. Well, I think it's because she, you know, my father was a military mm. person, so she was probably looking at that show through yeah. her eyes. And, and I can understand that, but it was just a television show. But, yeah. No, she wasn't into that show. Of course, you know, I loved Elf. I would laugh so much, I had tears oh, coming up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved my goodness, Elf. Yeah. That was such a fun oh, show. Yeah. <clears throat> Such a delightful show. Yeah, because they made all the jokes so silly and they ran them into the ground like I'm trying to eat the cat. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Or eat everything in sight. Or mm -hmm. this, what was one of the ones? Did I, I think I told you guys about this. I'll tell you, remember I told you on this, sh this show, or was it where Alf was, you know, he was so bored on Earth. I think he should have just left when he had the chance to go back Mm -hmm. To um, you know, with his um, Melmacian friends to find another planet. I think mm -hmm. he should have gone with Rhonda. He he missed the Tanner, so he stayed. And but he was continually bored. Mm -hmm. He be loved Gilligan's Island. He became addicted to Gilligan's Island, watching mm -hmm. Gilligan hours on every day, hours for hours for hours, and I was obsessed with Gilligan's Island. Well. He was talking, you know, to the uh, to Willie Tanner and Kate. You know, the fun never stops on Gilligan's Island, except here when the fun stopped during the Eisenhower administration. Why can't it be more fun like this house? We, you know, friendly and funny. I mean, the fun never stops there. And I said, "Can we go back to sleep? We'll even build you a little lagoon and maroon you on the opposite shore." I said, "Fine with me. You'll you'll hear me when you hear this sound. Oh, dun da da dun da dun da dun da." Well, yeah, well um, Willie tried to turn on the tap water the next uh -huh. morning. There was no tap water. So what's going on? He went outside. He slipped and fell into this big thing of uh -huh. water. Alf had torn up the entire yard and turned it into a lagoon. <laughs> and then he's slipping. Wait, now Willie's yeah. um, uh, um, splashing around in the lagoon I made. It's more fun already. And then he came up from the water. Willie said, what? Why is he go? And he fell down into the water again. You know, I'm just like, surprised uh, they haven't done a remake of that show yeah. yet, you know. Yeah, and Willie was covered in water, going, ah, ha, ha, ha. <coughs> and he had also, and then Alf had to redo the hole and said, you know, he wanted a restored yard, I want a yard, I can mow a lawn, I can mow no um, teepees, and, or no something or another, and no hut, and no palm uh -huh. trees, and no hut, and you're going to stay till I get it, and it's just hilarious. <laughs> But then Alf has a dream that he actually is with the castaways, but it wasn't uh, as much, yes. okay. but it wasn't as much fun as he had thought. How's that? Well, um, because they did have hardships and they had hard times and they were bored most of the time and you know, and it, Well I guess being stuck on an island you could be pretty bored because they it was yeah. like primitive like the exactly. theme song. No no yeah, no, no lights. No, yeah, no exactly. Lights, no motor car. Not yeah. a single luxury. Yeah, like and Robinson Crusoe as primitive as can be. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, and Al said, wait, you guys are supposed to be funny and friendly and wacky. I mean, we can't, well, I know, well, before I keep you from fighting among yourselves, mm -hmm. um, um, I'll, we remember, let's recruit, when the headhunter came to the island, okay. I'll be the headhunter and Gilligan can be Gilligan. Well, basically, they were then turning into their favorite TV show, The Tanner Family. Because they had all those, you know, could be oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. And then, but then Willie said, but you're on Gilligan's Island. You wanted to live on Gilligan's Island, one of the fun never stopped, remember? Mm -hmm. Then he fell in love with being in the Tanner family again, and mm -hmm. being a you know, Tanner, they just loved it. Oh, they're like, they're, oh, it's wonderful to be with him. Well, I think Alf should have just left with Rhonda, because it was that episode <laughs> where he was able to contact Rhonda and Skip and others, and they were going to take him back to find another planet, 
but he decided to stay with the Tanners. I think that was a big mistake, though. I think he should have gone with Rhonda in order to be picked up because he was so bored with the Tanners. That's why he got into so much trouble. He was always trying to find something to do, you know? I see. But I loved the show. It was hilarious. And, you know, when the, the episode where, you know, he found Gilligan's Island or wanted to recreate that lagoon, I was just laughing so hard I had tears uh -huh. coming out of my eyes. Was, it's visual. You'd have to see it. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's just, yeah. I'm playing another Chopin piece right here. Yeah, I've got a lot of episodes on tape. A video tape, but I wish I had the whole series. I mean, every episode of Alf. Some episode you can probably of order on Amazon, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah. Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. Hastings isn't around, and I'm so upset that Hastings closed. No, but Amazon has a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So you can look at it. Yeah, who knows, yeah. There. But I'm still happy about the uh, Me TV show on all those Irwin Allen That's great. shows yeah. on, uh, mm -hmm. on uh, Saturday Night. On yeah. The Time Tunnel. It was so yeah, good yeah, last yeah. week. Oh, cool. They went back to, um, like, the 18th century, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there were these, like, Martian creatures from the future that were trying to take over. Uh -huh. And so the two time travelers were trying to deal with these little Martian creatures and protect the Earthlings because they were so far behind. You know, they didn't have fancy guns because they were in the Interesting. 18th century. <coughs> and the Martian characters, that's the way to describe them. they took over the whole city. And that's oh, interesting. It was, it was just... It was just something, and the, and, the time, and the people in the time tunnel were watching and they were like powerless to try to stop this. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain, but uh, this is such a neat yeah, show. Yeah, that is fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's such a neat show. Yeah. But um, I enjoy watching a Me TV Wonderful. every week and stuff like that. So I'll keep watching as long definitely, as Definitely, definitely. You know, ABC, I've read the history of Time Tunnel. You know, they just, ABC, even though the show had good ratings, they just abruptly stopped the series. Yeah, that's odd. So it never comes to a conclusion. Yeah. So I wonder what MTV is going to do when they st when they get to the final episode of Time Tunnel. Are they going to just start the series over again? Yeah. Or are they going to put something else on? I don't mm -hmm. know. They got some good stuff coming on uh, Me TV this fall, later on this year. Speaking of fall, this is the year we get to see the new Star Trek series. Oh yeah. Oh, the series. Oh, 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 it's fascinating. I'm gonna want to spin the dryer just thinking about it. But well, that's something to look forward to. Oh yeah. Just thinking about the new Star Trek makes me want to go spin around in a dryer. Isn't that fascinating? Here's your Star Trek. <coughs> Me. There you go. Yep. You know, I wish they would have made an episode about doing their clothes, you know, the Starfleet uniforms. Did they have a washer and dryer on the Enterprise or something similar to clean? I don't know. They should have made an episode with that. That would have been one of my favorites. That would have been fascinating. <laughs> Here's your Star Trek. Yeah. I guess they're still filming that, aren't they, this year? Because it's going to air in the fall. I know. So they're probably I know. still filming it, you know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. That's fascinating. But speaking of uh, dryers and stuff, this might interest you. Yeah, but what, you know, on the uh, series Lost in Space? Yes. I was looking at this documentary about June Lockhart. Mm -hmm. They were talking about, you remember when they had the washer and dryers out in front of the spaceship? And no, I don't. Episodes when they were washing clothes? Don't remember June that. June Lockhart would put the clothes into the washer. They had like this futuristic looking washing machine. Fascinating! No, and this, is, this is what was funny in the documentary. So June Lockhart would wash the clothes, and then a few minutes later, the clothes would come out already automatically folded and wrapped up in plastic. <laughs> yeah, Fascinating. you never noticed that on the series? No, I haven't seen yeah, it so long. Yeah, if you watch that, every time uh, she's washing clothes, it would spit out the clothes, folded, pressed, and, and it always had plastic over it. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, it just just little things like that in the series. Uh, yeah. Uh, when you watch Lost in Space, yeah, they had a lot of wash. They had one little washer. That's fascinating. And, I wish I hadn't missed that. And the dryer just... Fascinating. It, 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 the, the washer, it, it's hard to explain because you got to see the series. Mm -hmm. It was it, it was usually uh, when it was a good day and there was no monsters out there washing yeah. clothes and talking. And 
working around a spaceship, and, and that thing would spit out the mm. clothes. Fascinating. Press, fold it automatically. Just the, the washer would just automatically do that. And they had to always fill the plastic out their clothes and put new clothes on them. Yep. And then lost in the space series. And I just thought that was so amusing. That would how be. this washing machine could just do all of that. Fascinating. You know? If that were the case, we wouldn't need any dryers anymore. I know. Fascinating. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, but if you watch Lost in Space enough, you'll start noticing that. They, they always do. That's how they wash their clothes. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to share that with you. So you're talking about washing. Yeah, definitely. Things like that. Just... Just watching our time. We got about ten minutes left. Fascinating. Yeah, about ten minutes left. So, but yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, doing oh. this second episode. Oh, definitely, this is definitely. Eleven. Yeah. This is the season eleven. Mm-hmm. Can you believe it? Yeah. Eleven seasons at ASAP Cafe. Amazing. Yeah. It is, and I think I told you when I first did this show, I didn't think it was gonna evolve to what it's yeah, become. Yeah, yeah. And I really want to thank. Professor Robert Green at the mm-hmm. University of Montana because he and his lovely wife, they're always watching this Wonderful. show. Wonderful. So <laughs> I'm really humbled by mm-hmm. it because this is just such a cheesy show. Yeah, way, I love it. I love it. It's fun cheesy. Exactly, you know exactly. Because I mean? they got enough shows with, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. That you wouldn't want kids to watch, but this is a family show that even kids can tune into. Yeah, it, it's just a goofy, silly show yeah. I created, and it seems to work, so as long as the audience will keep tuning in, yep. uh, <laughs> yeah. as long as MCAT gives me permission to keep making this, and people like yourself and so on show mm-hmm. up, I'll just keep doing it. Yep. But uh, yeah, ASAP Cafe, wow. What, mm-hmm. th- and you know, this show has been a delight. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely. I've said it before, it, this, it really has been a delight yeah, yeah. in my life, and I've been doing this show two and a half years now. Wonderful. <clears throat> And how's your show going? Very well, yeah. You started doing your show again. You had the same Yeah, I'll ask you. I saw the same format, everything. Yep. Yeah, Emmett has a show called The Awful Truths About, about Society. society. And, uh, Wednesday night at 10.30. The evils of society like school, work, the government, child abuse, and mm-hmm. I solutions from a Christian and anarchist and punk point of view. Yeah. Not a punk rocker anymore, but I try to lead people to the Lord. And just that, you know, once you're... But you can keep that punk image, though, you know. Yeah. That's, that's well, part of who you are. Yeah, it so. is. The thing is... Um, even though I've retired from the movement, once you're a punk rocker, I, you're always a punk but rocker because I mean, you have you the beliefs. The, you can keep the image and just yeah. keep your show going. Even exactly. You're physically older. Yeah. So if you get a chance to watch Image Show, tune in. It's, yeah, definitely. I've seen your show. Yeah. And I saw I saw I saw some um, footage of your show about 20 years ago. When yeah. You yeah. Oh yeah. Had the spiky hair. Yeah. Right definitely. Here. Yeah. You just kept that format, and I think it works. Yeah. It does. It does. It, it, it yeah. Works. Oh yeah. Definitely. It's it's totally different from this show. It's uh, well, know, yeah, this show is just silly, yeah. fun silly as well. Yeah, I definitely, call it, you know? definitely. But uh, it, there's a place for it. Yeah, there is, like there is a place for exactly. yours. Yours is a lot, obviously a lot more serious. Oh, than, yeah, yeah. You know, the topics mm-hmm. are a lot more serious. But I yeah. I think you've got a good thing going there thanks, uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, with your show. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of comment on oh, that. Oh, thanks, yeah. We're allowed to talk about people's shows yeah. on the, the station here, mm-hmm. so... Just keep it up. Yeah, definitely. Yep. You still got the Bible in front of the... Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. Yeah, so it's a punk, <coughs> punk point of view with a Christian... Yeah, exactly, and it's the evils of society. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's good. And I, and I also talk about current events if there's something I really want to talk about, you know. The current events like today, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. That's, yeah, see. definitely. I call them special reports. And I talk about, you know, very serious things going on in politics or in society. Like, this is horrible. This is, you know, this, yeah, we, this is the way you. to... Um, solve this, this is whatever, you know, and I've given many altar calls because we really are living in a dangerous society. I like that word, I think it's getting worse, but yeah, that's, that's this is a very serious show. But I always end with a surreal joke to lighten the mood because it's been so serious, and I always end with one of my washing machine jokes, you know. Well, we're almost out of time, so I'll let you close this show in a few minutes with a washing machine yeah, joke. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, uh, wow, 2017. Yeah. You know, that sounds so futuristic. It does. You remember, well, you might you might have been a little bit too young. The cartoon, The Jetsons. I remember The Jetsons very well. I watched and, it. You know, when I was a little boy, I used to watch that show. And this was like in the late 60s, yeah. I think it was. At that time, it seemed so futuristic. Yes. Like when you watch George Jetson yeah. talking on the screen, on yeah. the telephone, and you can see the person. Mm-hmm. And now in 2017, we can do that Yeah. with Skype. Mm-hmm. This, is no, this is no kidding. You, you can go to Skype.com, set up an account. 
and on your computer at home, you can talk to someone halfway around the world amazing. and literally see them wow. just like the Jetsons. Yep. Just amazing. Just yep. amazing. Because when I used to watch the Jetsons, everything seemed so futuristic. Yeah, it did. Now yeah. here it is 2017, and oh, yeah. my goodness. Well, we don't have robots doing well, our Well, no, but I mean the Skype is an yeah, true. incredible yeah. piece of technology yeah, that yeah. you can... You don't even need the LAM phone. You don't have the circular yeah, dial yeah. anymore. You just get on your computer and look on your screen yeah. and see someone. Or you can go to Facebook and do the same thing. Yeah. Like my friend Valerie, just the other night, um, I was talking to her. She lives across the street from me. I was talking to her on, on my computer. I could see her, and she could see me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just an amazing piece of technology. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Absolutely amazing. So I guess uh, the creator of the Jetsons had a pretty good imagination, not knowing at that time yeah, that exactly, some yeah. of the stuff on the Jetsons would be real. Yeah, yeah. Or Star Trek, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. Stuff like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Yeah. Well, you got any final things you want to say? Uh, and then I'll let you do your joke. Oh, I can't really think of anything. Well, let me make some acknowledgments first. I am your host, ASAP Adonai. We're in our Honolulu, Hawaii <laughs> set. And uh, this show is called ASAP Cafe. And the premise of this show, it's, it's silly, but it's fun silly. I invite a guest on this show every week. And some I have regulars mm -hmm. like our aging rocker Emmett. And they just talk to me as I play the piano. The easiest thing in the world. Yeah, definitely. And, you, you know... Some of the things we've talked about over the years on this show is just pretty amusing. Yeah, definitely. Everything from Mail Order Brides to uh, Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just silly stuff. Exactly. But fun silly. So, like I said, as I stated, we'll keep this going as long as we can. And um, on my media left, affectionately, our aging rocker, Emmett, who has his own television mm -hmm. show, Awful Truths About Society. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be using your character. We get that Lawrence Welk show launched yep. off there. Well, in a few moments here, hit it with your little joke. All I'll right. Let you close this segment of ASAP Cafe with one of your jokes. Yeah, well, it was one of my surreal jokes. It's a Christmas-themed one. I don't know if I've ever told this one in the cafe. I probably maybe even did last year. I can't remember. Um, well, there, um, Santa Claus went to the mall. <clears throat> and anyway, uh, yeah, Santa Claus was going to the mall, and he was chewing on an old football, and he was going to, you know, appear and, you know, talk to the kids. But then there were these washing machines, and the washing, he saw these washing machines in the middle of the mall, and the washing machines started to smile, so Santa Claus got mad and left. Ha ha! Wasn't that funny? <laughs> chewing on an old football, isn't that hilarious? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yep, wasn't that Lars? Oh. Mm -hmm. Christ yep. the Lord. Yes. Great ending. And on that note, Maranatha. Well, make yourself at home and uh, I'll oh, shut okay. everything down. And you wanted a copy of. Uh, that debate, right? Yes, I did. That Star Trek debate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. How are you feeling? Quite well. Good. You feel it for a second, show? I do. All right. Well, just make yourself at home. Let me shut this down, and then we'll relax and do show number two. Excellent. <coughs> Fascinating. <coughs> 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 <coughs>